Is the Terrorgeist any good? With this video, I am kicking off my Spooktober special, a name I just made up, covering all things spooky in Total War Warhammer leading up to Halloween. Or rather, I'm focusing on that with selected entries, and if it expands to entire rosters, I'll burn that bridge with holy water when I get to it. We begin with the Terrorgeist. Scary name, huh? Please like, subscribe, comment, and consider joining through my Ko-Fi page or other means. All support is deeply appreciated. The Terrorgeist comes in at 2,050 recruitment costs in campaign for 513 upkeep per turn, so it's top tier in price at least. Health is 8,289 on Ultra. Armor is 80, which is quite respectable. Leadership is 45, which is okay for an undead unit. Speed is 90, which is terrifyingly fast. Yes, that's two puns in one, deal with it. Melee attack is 41, with the added effect of poison. Reducing enemy speed and weapon strength by 15%, a nice, simple, consistent debuff. Attack interval is 4, pretty standard for monsters, but better than a lot of infantry and cavalry. The unit has a large splash and can damage up to 7 targets in one go. This is respectable without being extreme. Melee defense is 47, which is shockingly good for a single entity. Weapon strength is 420 default, split between 125 base and 295 armor piercing, a very nice ratio. The Terrorgeist also has a bonus versus large of 25, which is not top tier, but which is highly decent, and immensely raises its consistency against cavalry and monsters. Charge bonus is 40, which is alright, and mass is only 2000. It won't sumo wrestle Scarbrand anytime soon. This undead unit inflicts fear and terror, and of course, flies. Beyond that, the Terrorgeist has the old style of regeneration, coming with the disadvantage of 20% fire weakness, so Scarbrand is definitely going to roast one of these in pitched combat. Just be aware. Finally, the Terrorgeist is able to use Death Shriek, an undead version of Dragon Breath with 80 meters of range and magical damage, creating an explosion and being pretty decent against armor and against quote, a single unit, unquote. So this is what you want taking out Phoenix Guard or some kind of top tier ethereal unit, stuff with dodge-based physical resistance and archer units on walls. Hey, it comes up. The Vampire Lord Redline skills offer us Creatures of the Night, offering Terrorgeist a maximum of plus 12% weapon strength and plus 12 flat increase to charge bonus. And hey, sometimes it's a percentage, so I have to point that out. In this case, the flat increase is better. Flying Horrors gives rank 7 vets plus 5 melee attack, another plus 12 flat charge bonus, and 15% missile resistance, which Terrorgeists do not get by default. Obviously your enemies want to shoot one down before it leaves the skies. In the tech tree, your soul specific aid comes from Fueled by Fear, but that's okay. This provides plus 5 flat to melee attack, plus 5% weapon strength, and plus 20% charge bonus, so the maths tell us that's 40 base, plus 24 from redline skills, plus 20% here for 77 charge bonus, which isn't bad at all. Obviously it's a lot better if you charge at large targets while you're at it. So how do you use this spooky unit? Obviously you want to use it to terror break opponents already languishing against the rest of your force, so be consciously looking for such opportunities. You're also bringing something this expensive as an elite monster hunter, able to fly and relocate quickly to put the fire out where you need it the most. On offense, I'm always talking about how single entities should be disruptive, and that's especially true here with a poison inflicting monster. Target the opponent that can hurt you the most, and make it beg for death. Your necromancer will handle the rest at a time of his or her convenience. Going back over the stats, what stands out isn't its offensive prowess, though that's not only decent, it's also generalized. Against a blob, 41 melee attack base is calculated for each target hit, so barring extremely elite forces, you're likely to mess them up. What really stands out is the defensive prowess. Between poison, high melee defense, very decent hit points, regeneration, and just enough mass to get out of anything short of an ogre bull gang beating. And in that case, at least you're anti-large to fight back. Also note, you can use the breath weapon while on the ground. You might not want to, because being engaged in melee means you can't use it. A low standard that has bedeviled breath using monsters like the War Hydra since ancient history, but hey, you can. The bottom line is that what the Terrorgeist can accomplish alone is still sad and minimal compared to what it can accomplish as part of a team. 
sending a Terrorgeist in alone with its low leadership is begging for a swift end to its undeath. Sending one in as the leader of a gang of flying raiders, with Blood Knights rapidly following up and infantry crashing the main line just after, can create the conditions for complete victory. Keeping one in reserve and ripping apart the enemy's beautiful, lovely cavalry on demand isn't at all bad. Finally, whatever its virtues in melee, its breath weapon is all close air support, a tactical bombardment that hopefully costs your enemy a lot more than it cost you in hit points from missile fire. The true strength of the Terrorgeist is that there's nothing in the Vampire Count's battle plan that leaves it useless. Need to pin down a blob for a spell? It can do that. Need to tear around battered enemies? It can do that. Need to tie down a Flying Lord long enough to wipe his army out? It can do that. Will it survive all that? Not necessarily, but the flexibility leaves that mostly up to you. Also, it's a single anti, so healing it rocks, and the Vampire Counts heal. Any strategy ignoring magic isn't much of a strategy where the Vampire Counts are concerned. Take care, and have fun terrifying your foes on their one-way trip to the afterlife. Oh wait, it's not one way after all. Hi Necromancer!